This first question, we're given this molecule right here treated with sodium cyanide. What is the reaction going to be? The reaction is going to be SN2, and the product is going to be this. Now keep in mind, I'm only showing you the major products of these reactions. There might be other minor products that could be formed, but I'm not interested in those. In the second reaction, I'm given this molecule treated with sodium acetate. What reaction is it going to be? It's going to be SN1, and it's going to give me this product right here. In this third reaction, I'm given this starting material reacted with sodium t-butoxide. It's going to go E2 and give me this product right here as the major product. In this fourth reaction, I'm giving this starting material reacted with tert-butanol. It's going to undergo an E1 reaction and give me the same product that the E2 reaction went through by a different mechanism. Now, if any of you guys are interested in knowing why each of these do this, I'll go ahead and show that to you on the board right now. Here's another pile of questions, exact same premise as the ones from before. We go through our uh, battery of questions to determine if something's going to be SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. First of all, with this topmost question, we're going to look at the carbon bound to our leaving group, in this case an iodine. There's our carbon. Is that carbon primary, secondary, or tertiary? It's got a carbon to the right and a carbon to the left. That's two carbons. It's secondary. Secondary could mean that it could be any of the above reactions. So I'll go ahead and write all of them down. SN1, E1, SN2, or E2. <clears throat> I go to my next question. Is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? Well, I've got a sodium stuck to a cyanide right there. Remember, sodium is a group one a periodic table atom, which means that I can basically replace it with a negative charge. This is going to behave as if there were a negative charge on the carbon. That is a negative charge that can't be delocalized, which means it is a localized strong negative charge. It's strong, which means that it is going to be a two reaction. So I'll cross off my ones. My next question, is my nucleophile slash base a nuke or a base? That's all based on size. I draw it on paper. Is it smaller or larger than ethanol when I draw it on there? It's smaller than ethanol, <clears throat> which means that it is small. It can get into a hole to do a substitution. Smallness indicates that it's a nucleophile, so it's going to be an SN2 reaction. What does that mean then? Well, it means that the cyanide is going to come in here, form a bond with that carbon, kick off that iodide in a single step, well, bam, SN2 style, and give us our final product. Do, 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 do. And the cyanide will be up here. Now remember, with an SN2 reaction, the cyanide has to come in from the back side relative to this iodide. The iodide has a wedge, which means it's pointing three-dimensionally towards us. Cyanide has to come from behind, which means that it is going to have a dash. Now let's look at this one. Carbon bound to my leaving group is this guy right here. Is he primary, secondary, or tertiary? He's got a carbon to the right, a carbon to the left. That's two carbons. He's secondary. So that means it could be any of the above. I'll write them all down, SN1, E1, SN2, and E2. <clears throat> then I go to my next question. Is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? Well, I've got a sodium there. And I've told you that sodiums, potassiums, lithiums, you can essentially erase and pretend that they're a negative charge, because that's how they'll behave. <clears throat> so you might be tempted to think, well, that's strong. It's got a negative charge. Ah, but does it? Well, oh, yeah, it does. But is it a localized negative charge? It's not. This negative charge can resonance delocalize into there. So you could have that form a double bond there and have that go up there. That is a delocalized negative charge, which means that it's weak. It's not like a negative charge sitting on a single atom that's just like wanting to react like, oh, I want to kill somebody. It, it's not like that. It's a resonance delocalized. It's sort of a laid back negative charge, which means that it's weak. What does weak mean? Well, weak starts with a wa sound. And so does the number one. So it's going to be a one reaction. So I'll cross off my twos. Now I go to my next question. Is my nucleophile slash base a nuke or a base? Well, that's generally all based on size. I've told you that if you draw it on paper and it looks larger than ethanol, it's a base. If it's smaller than ethanol, then it's a nuke. What about acetate? Well, acetate is one of the exceptions I mentioned earlier. Acetate is a nucleophile, even though it's larger than ethanol. So it's one of the, those exceptions. Because it's a nucleophile, it's going to do an SN reaction. So I'm going to erase the E1. It's going to be an SN1. What does that mean as far as the mechanism is concerned? Well, because it's an SN1 reaction, this leaving group takes off, giving me a carbyl cation. At this stage, I could get rearrangements, such as a hydride shift or something like that, if there was some rearrangement that could be done that could give me a more stable charge. Unfortunately, that 
isn't the case here. So at this point, my acetate is going to come in and bond right there and give me my final product. Now once again, because this acetate is coming into this positively charged carbon, uh, with the leaving group gone, it's not uh, forced to come in from one side or the other. It can come in theoretically from both sides roughly equally well, though there are some exceptions to that occasionally. But we'll just imagine that being uh, the case. So that is going to be a nice racemic mixture with uh, that bond being straight, which indicates that I've got a 50-50 mixture of both enantiomers at that stereocenter. So this reaction once again is SN1. Let's look at the next one. I've got a carbon bound to a leaving group. Is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? It's got a carbon to the right, a carbon to the left. That's two. It's secondary, which means it could potentially be any of the above. So I'll write them all down, E1, SN1, E2, and SN2. I go to my next question. Is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? I've got a sodium on an oxygen. I can think of that sodium as essentially behaving like a negative charge. Can that negative charge in that oxygen resonance to localize? Absolutely not, which means it is a localized negative charge on a strong, powerful atom. That is a strong nucleophile slash base, which means that it's going to be a two reaction. I can cross off my ones. Next question, is my nucleophile slash base a nuke or a base? Once again, if it's larger than ethanol, it's a base. If it's smaller than ethanol, it's a nuke. That guy is a big old bulky thing, that terp butoxide. It's totally a base, which means that it will do an E reaction so I can cross off SN2. Now, this base could do an elimination of hydrogens over here to the right or inside. If it does it to the right, it will form a double bond right here on the end of this chain. If it does it here to the left, it will form a double bond right here inside the chain. Which of those would be more stable and hence more favorable? It would be doing the inside. And the reason is because of Zaitsev's rule, which states that the more substituted the carbon-carbon double bond, the more stable. So this base will come over here, grab that hydrogen, dump those electrons down, kick off that iodide in one, one fell swoop, E2 style, and give me my final product. Now the product that I've drawn here is the trans product. That is, the carbon group is pointing down up here, and then this chain is pointing up. I will also get the cis product, at least potentially, which would be that one. And I could get, of course, elimination occurring on the end. That is, if it were to grab this hydrogen over here. Which of those things will be the major product? Well, of course, the most stable one is the one that's the internal carbon-carbon double bond and the one that is trans. So this product right here at the top will be the major product. The reaction is E2. For this last one, I go through the same rigmarole. <clears throat> Here's my carbon bonded to my leaving group. Is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? It's got a carbon to the right, a carbon to the left. That's two carbons. It's secondary, which means it could be any of the above. I'll write them all down, SN1, E1, SN2, or E2. Next question, is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? I don't have any localized negative charges. We don't see lithiums. We don't see potassiums. We don't see sodiums. We just see lone pairs on that oxygen. When all I've got is lone pairs, that's weak. What does that mean? Well, it means because weak starts with a wa sound, it's going to be a one reaction. So I'll cross off my twos. Could be E1 or SN1. Then I go to my next question. Is my nuke slash base a nuke or a base? That's all based on size. Smaller or larger than ethanol is a base. Smaller than ethanol is a nuke. This is once again a big bulky thing, larger than ethanol, which means it's going to be a base, which means that it's going to favor elimination. So I can cross off my SN1. So my final verdict is that this is going to be an E1 reaction. What does that mean mechanism-wise? No, it means that this leaving group is going to take off. Giving me a beautiful secondary carbo cation right there. And at this point, my big bulky base can do an elimination, either pulling protons off of the carbon over here to the right. I'm only drawing one, even though there are three. Or a proton off the carbon left. Which of those protons is going to lead to the most uh, stable and most favored product? Well, using the same logic we did for the previous example, it's going to be the, one to the, the, uh, the internal one here to the left. So my big bulky base takes its lone pairs grabs that hydrogen, dumps these electrons down into there, closing like a door on a hinge to form a carbon-carbon double bond, and gives me this product. As with the previous example, you could, in theory, and probably will, get both the cis, the trans isomers, as well as the one where the double bond is over here. But this is the most stable product, the trans isomer with the internal double bond. So that will be the major product. This reaction is E1.